welcome to Austria, to the Styrian Mountains and the Red Bull Ring for Round 8 of the FIA Formula 3 European Championship. Everybody looking forward to taking on this rejuvenated track again with its combination of fast corners and elevation changes. And two drivers in particular were pleased to be ready to get on the grid here in Spielberg. Carlin driver Ed Jones is back in business after a crash at Poe early in the season injured his back, causing him to miss four rounds. It's a great feeling, you know, um, after the injury it was very difficult for me because everything we do, all the drivers, revolves around the racing. And so when my back was injured I wasn't able to do any of this. So it left me with nothing to do and I'm just glad to have everything back finally. There's a brand new face in the paddock as well, Alfonso Chiles Jr., the Mexican replacing Mitch Gilbert, whose next two weekends will be in GP3. So a new face at Fortec. Everyone in the European Formula 3 paddock is watching the championship battle. It now seems to be about two drivers. Leader Esteban Ocon and his chief pursuer Max Verstappen. Before the weekend, Esteban had a 116 point lead, seemingly quite comfortable. Verstappen closing the gap with a remarkable run of form. We asked some of the other drivers what they thought. Would Ocon still be the champion at the end of the season? Uh, I don't see why not. He's on uh, really good form. He's always uh, qualifying and finishing consistently at the front. But as long as he finishes around uh, max the next few races, then I think more or less he's, he has the championship sealed. Everything is possible, but Ocon's a good driver, and uh, I think he can finish it off. If you look at the championship from previous years, I think no one ever did uh, win as a rookie, maybe top three. His package is working well, you know, he's driving very well, his car is very good, so everything's working for him, and I think he will be the champion. Yeah. He looks pretty solid and strong everywhere, so... Uh, yeah, I mean, everything can happen. Uh, last year I was fighting for the championship and sometimes there was like 100 points uh, changing very quickly, so anything can happen, but I honestly think that he, he got this. It's close. Uh, we're just over the halfway point with the championship, but um, Max is going to have to have some really good races, and uh, I imagine he will also. He is one hell of a driver. Uh, I've known him for quite a while. Good kid, and, uh, you know, He's got to put the pressure on Ocon. It's been impressive to see two rookies battling for the title. It'll be a while before we know who triumphs at the end of the season, but here in Austria, it's not all about the championship contenders because Lucas Hauer, the Austrian, is hoping to put us in a good frame of mind here at Spielberg. Hello, my name is Lucas Hauer. I'm driving for Mitchell Motorsport and I'll show you one lap at the Red Bull Ring. Now we are in start finish going to the first corner, which is quite uphill. It's a very fast corner, third or fourth gear. It's important to be early on throttle because there is a long straight afterwards. Again, it goes quite uphill for the second corner, which is a very tight hairpin. We try to make it V-style, which means late braking and early throttle, no roll speed. Try to get the inside curve. Again, quite long straight. Now we're going downhill for the turn three. Again, it's important to make it V-style, very late braking. Try to get the inside curb and to be early on full throttle. Now we're going onto the double left, very fast part. A little tap on the brake and then immediately building up throttle. Important to be early on power. The second one is really a scary corner. We don't go, it isn't a fully lift. Again, early on throttle is important. Now we're going to the last two right hands corners. First one is a, is a lift, no brake. Very fast. Going to the limit. And the, and the last corner, just try to be early on throttle because you have a long straight afterwards again. Okay, this was one lap at the Red Bull Ring. Thank you. Enjoy the races. Heading into the first of our three races, our track guide, Lucas Hauer, could have qualified a little better. He'll be eighth place on the first grid of the weekend. On the front row, though, the championship rivals. Max Verstappen lines up in second place for Van Amersfoort, and Esteban Ocon has his 
14th pole of the season. Pole may not be as important here as other tracks. I think you got quite uh, good possibilities to overtake, but uh, it's always important to be in the front. And uh, we'll see how it goes. A good first corner will be the key, a good start. Uh, and, then, uh, and then we'll see, normally, normally it should be fine. So it's race 22 of the season, red lights are on and away they go. Esteban Ocon not making a good start. Max Verstappen level with him as they run into the first corner. And the Dutch driver with the inside line. Ocon turns in around him. Max over the curbs, flies in the air and into his rival. He rejoins in third place as others take avoiding action. But Ocon is right down the field. So a racing incident. Or was it Verstappen's fault? Doubtless there'll be two points of view as ever with any incident between drivers. First corner, everybody desperate to try and make an impression. I think he has to come to me first because I think he's the one who was wrong. My opinion is just that, uh, yeah, he had a bit of a better start. Uh, so I arrive, I break late on corner one. I gave him space and he just took the curb and understeer and crashed into me. And there's more to talk about. Antonio Fuoco passed by Verstappen, who runs out very wide. Verstappen hit with a five-second penalty after the race, and that will become important later on. Track limits being rigidly adhered to, especially on the exit of Turn 1. Meanwhile, a close fight between Lucas Auer and Dennis Van La in the red, white and blue number 26 car. Auer keen to do well in front of an Austrian crowd racing here on home tarmac. Maybe a little bit too keen. Lucas Auer and Dennis De La made contact just before Pirelli corner. Then bad luck for Ed Jones, the comeback man with mechanical woes. Put him out on lap five. Out from the battle for the lead between teammates Tom Blomqvist and Antonio Giovinazzi. Behind them, Felix Rosenquist in front of Jake Dennis, the red, white and blue machine. Blomqvist, number 31, holding off Giovinazzi so far, but little to choose between them. Battle for third place, Felix Rosenquist, Jake Dennis and the recovering Max Verstappen, but with that penalty that would hang over his head at the end of the race. Dennis lunges to the inside in the second corner hairpin, runs wide, hits Rosenquist, who goes off and rejoins, but Verstappen goes by them both. Rosenquist tries to fight back against Jake Dennis. They kind of dive-bombed me into turn two, break really late, and I sort of had to... I tried to block, but then it was just too tight, so I had to open a bit, otherwise we would crash, and then that allowed Max to just uh, go through quite smoothly. A couple of laps later, another incident at the same corner. Jules Simkoviak and Nicolas Latifi. Latifi in the number one car. Wheels interlocked, and luckily Simkoviak came back down on his wheels. Both would soon retire. Meanwhile, Felix Rose and Chris and Jake Dennis continuing their battle. Dennis with the inside line. Towards the end of the race, in the heat of the Austrian summer, the tyre started to become really heavily worked. As it comes to the last 10 laps, you're, you're fighting a car so much. It's great for the fans, but for the drivers, it's, you have to be fully focused the whole time. So uh, it's exciting, but it's hard work also. Just behind Jake Dennis, Antonio Fuoco, number 25 car, 16 is Gustavo Menezes, and Jordan King, the blue carling car, right behind. That's the battle for sixth. Good wheel-to-wheel -wheel action, no contact. Jordan King looking for his opportunity to sweep around the outside, gets by Menezes. And it's his turn to try and tack Antonio Fuoco in the number 25 machine. Out front, Tom Glonquist opening up a big margin over Antonio Giovinazzi. Max Verstappen in third place. Son of former World Rally champion Tom, uh, Stick Blomqvist, Tom rushing away here in Austria, much better fortunes than in Moscow, where he was really on the unlucky end of the stick. Delight for Tom Blomqvist and for the Carlin team. It's a 1-2 for Jagonia I am with Carlin. Max Verstappen in third, but with that five-second penalty, dropped down to fifth position. Delight for Tom Blomqvist, his first win since the Hungara ring two months ago. Max Verstappen with that... Uh, 
five second penalty dropping behind Jake Dennis and Felix Rosen. I did a, a good first lap and managed to build a you know comfortable little gap and it seemed he wasn't really able to do much with that. But then I had a, a pretty big moment in the last corner and he caught right back up to me and you know nearly passed me again. I had to defend into turn two and turn three. Yeah, it was really good fight, but still we are teammates, so we cannot really uh, crash because uh, we will destroy the race for the team. But yeah, I'm, uh, I'm very happy uh, for the team actually, and uh, P1 and P2 in the team is a really good result. So stay with us as we return to the Red Bull Ring. Still two more races in the afternoon's calendar.